Hello and welcome to Quest of Sports Monthly, an in-depth look at Quest Athletics. I'm Peter Schuler, and on this month's show, we'll be joined by Quest's new softball coach, Christina Grimm, and catcher, Melissa Fruza. We'll also welcome track and field coach, Brian Loker, and all-conference hurdler, Calvin Herman. And just before we go, we will steal a few moments with outgoing Booster Club president, Jim Battersby. First up on Quest of Sports Monthly is softball. Softball is back with a, the core of its lineup intact from 2014's playoff team, but also bringing in a new head coach with Christina Grimm. Today we are co joined by Coach Grimm and catcher Marissa Fruza. I'd like to welcome you, uh, Christina and Marissa. Welcome to Quest of Sports Monthly. Thank you. Uh, new season, off to a fairly good start, uh, kind of putting, putting things together after a, uh, you know, just joining here at, in the middle, middle of January, just before the season started. How are things kind of coming, coming together for you right now as your first, first year as a coach? I've been really impressed with this team's ability to gel. I walked into a team that was already really well bonded and they've been very welcoming to me and adjusting to different coaching styles. So um, I'm really hopeful for a conference. I think we're a really amazing team. And if we rise to our own potential, I think you'll see us um, coming into to postseason. Now you're in a unique position. You're a former Cuesta athlete. I am. Uh, and But this is also your first kind of head coaching position. Uh -huh. uh, you played at, at three different colleges. Yeah. You played in here as a local star at, at Morro Bay High School. Kind of, are you drawing on any of those past coaches or who, wh where are you kind of uh, picking up your coaching philosophies from? I think it comes from all of the coaches that I've worked with, from my 14 under coach who turned me into a real softball player. That's where I learned to be tough. Before that, I was kind of just like, I have a hangnail, I don't want to play today. And he turned that around in one season. All the way through my uh, 16 under and my gold ball coaches, it, it's all, um, when you run a fast schedule like that with small teams, it's a very different mentality than when you have 20 on the field and you're trying to get reps for everyone. So I've, I think especially my travel ball coaching has been very valuable in working um, with 11 on the field, 12 on 12 as a whole, um, and running the schedule with 40 games in such a, a short time. Yeah. Now, Marissa, you've, you're part of that sophomore core that's came, come back. Yes. Uh, you're the catcher. You're a leader on the field. Yes. Uh, so it's kind of a, kind of an important position. What kind of the, some of the things that, that you you've developed your team your, your, that that group has developed after losing their coach mm -hmm. uh, in the fall and then trying to put it back together without a coach until Christina joined you? What what have you learned as a player? Um, I've learned to be very flexible as a player. You know, coming in, you know, having a set coach, but then all of a sudden losing one and gaining another one. It's more of flexibility. You know, having to cope with different coaching styles, different attitudes. You know, so it's been it's been um, a ride, but we've been going smoothly with it. It's been a it's been fun. It's been an experience. Now, has that sophomore group gotten together and talked about these these changes? Or? We've we've talked amongst ourselves, but then as a team, we've gone to like you know we came together, gotten closer, being you know what we have to stick together, you know, help our coach out and help each other out, and we've had a really strong connection with our, each other. Now, having that core, are, have you have you are the things that have, you've come into and been surprised by, or uh, how has this group worked with you, and and your philosophies? You know, I think if anyone walks in, walks out and watches our team play, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised by the core of our, our, our infield right through the middle. We've got an amazing catcher. We've got strong pitching. We've got middle infielders and a third baseman all coming back as sophomores. Savannah Johnson in center field is just a pleasure to watch. And so despite what this team has been through, I think what anyone will be continually impressed by is just the raw physical talent on this team and their ability to push through maybe something that's benefited from what they've been through through the fall is just the ability to focus on softball above all else. Yeah, you're returning the uh, conference player of the year, Brio Jala, mm -hmm. first team all conference, Michaela Strom at second base, mm -hmm. uh, second team all conference at, at third base with Aaron Pennington, mm -hmm. center field another first team all con conference player with mm -hmm. Savannah Johnson. Uh, then you have Gabby Masari moving over from catcher to first. Mm -hmm. You moving in the full-time catching position this year. Um, for you, Marissa, what were kind of your hopes coming into your sophomore season, and what what were the things you guys you're looking at personally? Um, well, last year I know I had a rough start, being um, you know starting and stuff like that. But this year I've improved. I improved in myself with my character and my attitude, and it's been paying off. You know, out in the field, I've learned new things every day with my teammates and my new coach. It's just been a, a pleasure working with all of them. So this year, I'm expecting big, ex big changes and, um, and a lot of fun, a lot of success. Now you guys did have a lot of success last year. Yes. Uh, the first playoff team uh, in six years at Cuesta College. Yeah. Uh, are there things that you bring back that you're kind of you translate and bring back to the freshmen that are coming in and kind of bring them up to speed with you guys? Have you guys been yeah. able to do that as sophomores? Yes, we've been teaching them that you know, 
you know, with the mentality, keep moving forward. Um, forget about what happened last inning, last play, every pitch, keep moving on with a new mentality. And with these new freshmen, I want them to give a good example. That way they can lead next year when the sophomores go away. And um, so we're trying to, we're working with them and they're doing a really good job. Now, kind of Christina, you played on a playoff team here. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, all state for us again. And uh, what are some of the things that you see as, as you assess this group and your expectations as a coach and kind of moving forward from here? Um, I think that one of um, one of the strengths of the team is that short memory that Marissa was talking about, but also a long tradition of really excellent softball at this school. Whether we come and go um, through our post uh, for our postseason play, we have a lot of really great athletes that have come from this school, and they can draw from that as much as they can draw from each other. Um, also, the fact that whenever we're in a tough position, given the experience of this team, their post conference or their post conference play as well. Um, we have really spectac spectacular plays that are just waiting to be had and the physical talent to pull it off. Now you talk about, you know, the players that have come through here. A lot of them, like yourself, were local. Uh, what, what are some of the things that you're saying? You, know, you haven't had an opportunity to recruit. Uh, you came in here as the season right. was going. There was, was, I think, schools, you said the board passed, approved you on, on January 15th. And, mm -hmm. School started on the 18th, I believe. Yeah, so there I think wasn't, our first game was the 30th. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't a lot of time for you, but as, as mm -hmm. you're kind of, you're, you're now, you're a couple months in, mm -hmm. what is, are you kind of building a program identity that you feel comfortable with? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the things you would do to kind of bring in those recruiting uh, local high school kids that you I'm really benefiting from the reputation of this team. We've already been contacted by some young ladies who are interested for playing uh, in playing for us next year. I think one of the benefits of being a local kid and having been um, a solid athlete as far back is that my I have a little bit of name recognition, enough that people are willing to point kids in my direction. Um, so that's also been beneficial. But just knowing a lot of people in the community for a very long time, I'm starting to get phone calls from other coaches to see what's going on over here. Everyone's curious to see what's going to happen. So that's been very beneficial, and, and next season is looking just as solid as this one. I know I, as, as a former Quest athlete myself and coming back and being a coach, uh, what has it been like for you uh, coming back and now now these people who were the coaches around uh, on campus and your teachers when you were there, mm -hmm. what's it like for you coming back here and now that you're their peer? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been quite the experience and especially being as young a coach as I am the temptation is always there to fall back into kind of a player mentality and I think the team has been very generous in their time kind of letting me differentiate between the last time I was on this field and now being in charge of the field as a coach um, but it's it's very nostalgic it was um, Cuesta has been one of the most positive softball experiences of my life and so I'm very grateful to be back at the school and to give back to the school and to the team what it was given what it has given to me all right. Well, that does it. Uh, Quest of Softball on, on the road to the playoffs again, hopefully. Uh, we'd like to, good luck to the Cougars in conference and the rest of the season. So coming up next, we'll take a look at track and field with Brian Loker and Calvin Herman when Quest of Sports Monthly returns. Coming up. Cuesta.edu. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. Explore the world of digital communication and tap into your creative genius. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. This is your boy, the DUI, and you're listening to KGUR.org. Your digital future is at Cuesta College right now. Log on to cuesta.edu now for enrollment dates and class information. Don't hit the boom in this stuff. Blow it, bro. Cuesta. Edu. We're back on campus with Quest of Sports Monthly. I'm Peter Schuler. We are joined by track and field coach Brian Loker and star hurdler Calvin Herman. I'd like to welcome Brian and Calvin to Quest of Sports Monthly. Uh, track and field. Off and going again. You already had the Slowtown Track Classic to start the season. Uh, coming up, hopefully next month, we have our WC Coast Conference. We'll have another home right. meet coming up. 
Um, so, so far, end of the season, Brian, what, what, what's kind of like the outlook of the season? How are things coming together for you? Things are coming together great. We have a lot of uh, returning second years and third years who have contributed to the program quite a bit. Um, and being able to get the get that first year under your belt and then be able to contribute your second year or third year and really be a, a scoring difference for the team is a big deal for us. Um, and we love those guys, really great leaders on the team. And um, our men have just taken it all and uh, really, really gone forward with our team goal of trying to win a conference championship for the first time in Quest of History. Now, is that part of, part of uh, are you stacking the team from last year? Or is, is, is that part of it? Or is this one of those things that's a happy circumstance for you guys? Um, not, I mean, it's, it's ended up being a happy circumstance. We had eligibility issues and injury issues last year. And um, last year was a pretty tough year for us, actually. We were a little understaffed in terms of our team. Um, but this year, this year, the, the, you know, the guys who we weren't able to run have all come back. They're all contributing to the team. Um, they're all here to win, and they're all helping each other get where we need to be. You did have a, bit, a big win the first time the WC North uh, meet in Bakersfield, kind of set you guys on the right track for conference. You think? Yeah, I think that was since I've been here in the last eight years coaching with track and field. I think that's the biggest win we've had since we've been here. So it's a good indicator of good things to come. And and our conference is pretty tough this year. Um, Santa Barbara City College is, has a great team. So they're going to have some individual champions by the time conference championships come around. Uh, College of the Canyons is strong again. Glendale is another strong team. And we were able to do some work and put some things together and, and end up coming up on top at Bakersfield. Now, Calvin started off the year pretty well. Uh, already jumped up ahead of your times from last year um, and won, won an event at, at the uh, WC North, North Meet in Bakersfield. Kind of uh, as your sophomore season coming in, what were kind of your hopes and what were you kind of looking at coming in? Um, sophomore year coming in, I was just kind of hoping to improve um, a lot more than my hurdles, just like getting used to the 110 height because they go up um, three more inches from high school. So then at my sophomore year, just my 110 hurdles have gotten a lot cleaner and smoother. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know, just trying to get really in shape. And Now, th your <laughs> freshman year, you, you came out and you did cross country. This year, you yeah. didn't do cross country. Did that make a difference for you? It allowed you to get used to the hurdle height a little bit or train more for track? Or is um, yeah, I think it's definitely made a difference because I like, I, we would be, um, Working out more in the gym, you can work out heavier, and it's more, it's um, it's shorter, like shorter durations, heavier weight. So I feel like that's just been helping me work out, be faster and quicker. Right, your longest As race cross right now country is, is, is the 400 meters, yeah, yeah. so you don't need that, <laughs> you know, three four miles out of the, out of the mm -hmm. Okay, um, now Brian, you got all these. You have a great team, but it's all individual events. Kind of, where's your focus on? You want, I know you're talking about your conference championship this yeah. year, but how do you get, is it just focusing on individuals and hopes the team gets forward, or how um, do you keep a team atmosphere? I, say, I think the things that we've tried to focus on here is uh, we feel like we can score a lot of points in our conference standings in the technical events. So even though we don't have great pure sprinters, we have fantastic hurdlers. Um, 110s have always been really good for us, as Calvin's proving this year, the 400 hurdles are also a great event for us. Uh, we have a, a fantastic atmosphere and dynamic in the distance events. Um, and since I'm able to work with the athletes full time in the fall and the spring, uh, we try to get as many points as we can there. Um, and the other avenue I think is, is really a, a, can be a shining star for us in the future is getting pure throwers who are less interested in the, the football type of thing and just want to get better from football from a, a throwing perspective. <laughs> so that's something that, that we're, we're tapping into. We've got better throwers this year than we have in many years in the past. So in a lot of depth from yeah. almost every aspect. And nice to have the throwers. Quest of football has been undefeated since 1979, but we won't <laughs> go into that much too much. Right. But we talk about about the sophomore leadership and stuff like that. Uh, Calvin, do you feel like the, you've had to, or have you just naturally moved into more of a leadership role as a sophomore and a veteran team? I mean, coming from the freshmen looking up towards the older people, I guess I've become more of a leader just with the stretching and trying to get team camaraderie, like everyone uh, associating with everyone, like showing that the sprinters can get along with the distance people and the throwers can get along with the distance and sprinters. Because you had your cross country time. Yeah, so, you kind of so now that, I feel that, like that, I can, that area. can join both those people, <laughs> <laughs> or is what I've been trying to work on at least. <laughs> now, Brian, you, you talk about your ability to, to coach with the distance guys and work with everybody, but you also have put together a nice uh, coaching staff. You want to talk a little bit about some of the people you've put together to help help you get to your conference title? Uh, Tara Kulikov, who we added last year, um, is a fantastic uh, technical coach for the hurdle events. Um, I mean, she's helped develop you know, Calvin from a, a cross-country runner 
to this guy who's leading the conference in the 110s and you know top five in the Southern California right now in the 400 hurdles and has already surpassed his PRs from last year. So you take someone who has the technical skills to teach an event like she does and someone who has the motivation like Calvin to excel and to work hard um, and it's a perfect combination. She, she got to work with them all fall and yeah, had that absolutely. opportunity there. So that was great. Um, additionally, we've, we've brought on uh, David Burton this season. Uh, he's actually a former record holder at Chico State and uh, also competed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, great tapping school to the, go to. Tapping, tapping and um, <laughs> he, was, he ran at uh, Cal State University Northridge also. So a very good uh, decathlete back in his day, still doing masters running himself. Um, and he's been really instrumental in kind of the foundation of our jumps crew and getting those guys where they need to be. So. Uh, we have a very, very dynamic jump screw this year. They're very good at, at all the jumps, and um, that's been a strong piece. And then also getting Kathy Devaney, who is a longtime, um, you know, San Luis High grad, Cal Poly grad, been in the area. Um, she's she's helping to grow our, our the throws throwing, right now. You have the new, the relatively new discus hammer ring and all those yeah. other facilities out there that kind of jumped up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's been fun. And then we still have. Mike Kinter out there. A little yeah, bit. Kinter's still doing his thing out there. <laughs> we have a lot of pieces this year. Chris Manuel has joined us. He's right. a former alum. Um, he vaulted for us quite a few years back, and uh, you know, joining Jan Johnson to help help travel some of the meets, get some of the technical coaching in. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, Calvin, for you, uh, again, we, you've already surpassed your times from last year in the 110 and the 400 hurdles. Which one is kind of your your favorite there? Uh, you know what? I guess I think I would have to like them. Both equally. <laughs> I mean, I like the one whether I do more or whether I do better at that meet. So, okay, so, so it's all, <laughs> they're pretty equal. As long as you get to run fast and jump over something, you're pretty happy. Then, yeah, pretty happy. <laughs> okay. Now, Brian, we, we just had the last bond, and if you could talk to me a little bit about what you your expectations. You have you have the Fairbanks cross country course, which is uh, where your runners train the Harriers. Uh, yeah, and then you also have the Quest of Quest of uh, Track and Field Complex, which is still growing slowly and incrementally. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, what are you looking at for for the program on, on those two facilities? Um, I've put together a strong vision of what I'd like to have out at Cuesta, and we have absolutely fantastic facilities. We just need to continue to develop them a little bit more. Um, in the future, you know, right now the the state meet goes to um, Woodward Park every year. Uh, Southern California Regional Championships sort of rotate. Uh, we'd, we'd love to host a cross-country championships out of Fairbank. We already have the facility to do that. We just need some area to, to house people. We have hosted the state championships back in 1998. We did. It's been a long time to bring the back to We would love to do that again. <laughs> um, and from a track and field perspective, you know, we'd like to switch the, the hammer and discus cage so that we're throwing into the wind, which gives the, the lift and farther throws. Um, and, you know, we need the stands to, right. to help put, uh, put some people in so viewers can watch and support our events and, and listen to some great music and watch some great events exactly so that does it here for quest sports monthly uh with track and field we'd like to thank coach brian loker and star hurdler calvin herman for joining us when we return we'll talk with quest athletic booster club president jim battersby questa.edu television radio broadcast communication Explore the world of digital communication and tap into your creative genius. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. This is your boy, the DUI, and you're listening to KGUR.org. Your digital future is at Cuesta College right now. Log on to Cuesta.edu now for enrollment dates and class information. Hey, don't hit the boom in this house. <laughs> Blown it, bro. Cuesta.edu. We're back with the current president of the Cuesta Athletic Booster Club, Jim Battersby. Jim is here for his final episode, one of our favorite guests here. Uh, Jim is moving on out of uh, the presidency, and we'd like to have Jim. Th thank you very much for joining us again. And uh, just uh, kind of you're moving on now. You've been here in San Luis Obispo, former educator here at Cuesta College and at Cal Poly. 
and now you've been in retirement and now you're moving on. So what's, you're going up to the Bay Area, is that? Going to the Bay Area, we're going to uh, reside in Waller Creek. Um, I'm from the Bay Area, spent like 50 plus years before I came down here. I've been here for 19 years. I call it kind of like a extended vacation. I, I love it down here. It's a great place to live. The quality of life and everything is excellent. But I do have a brand new granddaughter uh, who's six months old. I haven't had a chance to have see any of my grandkids really grow up. Uh, my wife's professional situation has changed. Uh, I have family up there. I have a few uh, high school and college mates that are still alive <laughs> that I can check in with. And it's it's going to be a nice move. Not an easy one, but uh, it's going to be a good it, move it, for it, us. Almost two decades down, uh, down here. And, yes. And, uh, We've been spoiled by having you as a president and as a coworker here at Cuesta College. Uh, just want to say, uh, you know, you know, now that you got to go up there and spoil your uh, grandkids. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, what are some of the things that you feel, as a booster club president, that were most important for you as as a member of a supporter of Cuesta Athletics? Okay. Well, I think the like a lot of things around here, uh, the the boosters really evolved uh, primarily as a fundraiser uh, historically. But we really accelerated that. We did a lot of great things, uh, several uh, banquet type things. We had Jenny Finch, which I will always consider a highlight for a fundraising dinner. We had Ronnie Lott. We had Steve Mariucci. So we had some nice big fundraisers. We've gotten more conservative the last few years, um, less time involvement to do things like raffles for the Super Bowl, raffles for uh, Green Bay Packer games. And even to the point now, and this is kind of funny, we sell chicken and ribs once a month um, out by the track. Or winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, <laughs> winner, chicken dinner applies totally to this situation. So we've been really active. The faces have changed, but the enthusiasm is there. We have a nice balance of experience and youth, and it's really been an asset to the athletic program. Now you've been an athlete yourself. You've been an official. You've been, you still coach at the... Uh, very peewee level uh, with middle schoolers. And, yes. uh, so what, what, what are kind of for you, for athletics, what's the importance of that and why should people be involved with Quest Athletics and Quest Booster Club? I absolutely think, I'm, I love athletics. athletics. I, I have been involved with athletics as long as I can remember, probably four or five years old. I always involve my, my children, my four children. Uh, I think you need to be well-rounded so all my kids are good swimmers. They can run a bit. Uh, they have good healthy habits, probably way better than mine at the <laughs> current time. So totally. And the community college, I think, is the level I really love because it's so accessible. It's so comfortable. It's not the big time NCAA um, situation. You can literally just drive up and go to a game and interact with the, the coaching staff. It's very accessible. And I feel like um, the, the staff here are my friends, not just, uh, you know, fellow, fellow workers. Um, and I feel the same way about the Quest of the Boosters, that, that we're friends. And athletics delivers a lot of powerful lessons, and they're good life lessons, and I really believe in, in that process. Yeah, I know talking to some of the other coaches, they're very uh, disappointed that you are leaving and understand that you do have bigger things to do. And I, I think you've been recognized before uh, about having the uh, – Fan of the year distinction. Yes. Uh, that's something that's kind of done. And, and uh, name of Alberta Deutsch. Uh, yes. Very big yes. booster for the yeah. Deutsch family. Definitely. Dan Deutsch, her husband. Um, being the fan of the year, what are the, some of the things that you take from that? I mean, that, that's an important thing that, that not only recognized by, by, you know, the booster club, but also the coaches themselves realized that you are a special part of the, part of the athletic department. Is that something you, you know, kind of figured you were, you were. I, I would hope so, but I'm, I'm not trying to be, I'm not humble about this. Uh, it was well earned, but it was a love. You know, as I, had, the coaches know me because I come to their games. I talk to them, um, off site. I get involved. I try to, you know, keep up on everything. And it keeps, keeps me going. It keeps me sharp in, in many ways. So, uh, I'm proud to be a fan of the, fan of the year. Alberta and Dan Deutsch were dear, uh, dear people, and they're wonderful people. Dan continues to be, and I'm very proud. I was the second recipient of uh, that reward. The first, I can't recall her name. She just passed away. Monica Satterwhite. Monica yes. Satterwhite. She was a beautiful young lady 
also. So, uh, yeah, it's humbling. I appreciate it. And I didn't work for it or anything. It just was kind of a natural flow for me. I guess we do, we do pull on you out here, here at Question Sports Monthly. We, you, you're a frequent and, you know, uh, cho- chosen guest out here. We really like having you out here. But also, you've also helped been part of our broadcast for, for the Quest Sports Monthly, just a basketball a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that, um, kind of want to, want to say is, is thank you for, for what you've done here, but not only for the athletic department, but also for, uh, uh, our real broadcast production okay. here. Uh, <laughs> so, that's been one of my favorite things to do. I think uh, Randy and yourself and others, I think I finally got the uh, uh, the basics down right and I wasn't talking over play-by-play and stuff uh, toward the end. That, that's just the involvement I love. And it's I'd never really done too much of this before, so it was a chance for me to get into something new and it kept me stimulated and everything. So... I appreciate the opportunity to be able to do that stuff, and I hope I can do something similar uh, up north. Uh. And I think I think everybody appreciates your hands-on approach as a Booster Club president. But what are some of the things, now we have the big bond that just passed, what are some of the things that you see uh, that the Booster Club can help, or what's, what's kind of your well, view as a Booster Club president? There, there are some interesting projects that have been proposed, and I don't mind speaking about it. Um, uh, one is um, a up-to-date kind of uh, enclosed uh, score score booth for both baseball and softball. Uh, we've kind of tried to stimulate that a little bit. I, I hopefully the boosters will continue to, to push that particular thing and then just uh, aid every sport in every way they can through fundraising as well as volunteer support. All right. Now, as you leave the booster club, as you move on to, to your next phase, phase of your uh, life, um, Audrey Dodd is going to be moving in, yeah, former absolutely. softball Terrific. player at Cuesta. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about your successor. If you, We had reached out to her to try and get her here, but she didn't make it. Yes, so. yes, she's a busy lady. Her uh, her voicemail was full, so I, I don't have the technology to deal with that. So anyway, uh, well, as you said, she played softball. She's uh, an outstanding young lady, professional in the banking industry, basically works out of Paso Robles right now. Um, I always told her when she accepted vice presidency, she was a heartbeat away from the top job. So uh, <laughs> she <laughs> she has officially uh, taken over, and uh, I think you'll find her very very delightful, a wonderful person to work with, and she'll keep the board going in the the right direction. So she'll be a, definitely an asset. Well, again, I'd like to thank Jim Battersby, uh, former Booster Club president, <laughs> for joining us again today. Uh, always a tre- uh, treat to have him out here. Uh, today's That concludes today's edition of Cuesta Sports Monthly. Remember to stay up to date on Cuesta Athletics. Visit the Cuesta Athletic website for information on all of Cuesta's athletic teams. We'd like to thank today's guests, Christina Grimm, Brio Jala, Brian Loker, Calvin Herman, and, of course, Jim Battersby. The show is produced by and at Cuesta College by the Cuesta Broadcast Production Class. And w- all things are available <laughs> Check out Channel 19 all year long for this show as well as ongoing broadcasts of Cuesta Athletics. I'm Peter Schuler for all of us here at Cuesta. Thanks for watching and thank you for your support of Cuesta Athletics.